Chairman, uh, Mr. Prince, welcome. Thank you for your testimony. Thanks, sir. Um, I want to focus on the um, the whole issue of cost and um, profitability, and I want to clarify something. You talked at one point about the fact that what you are essentially doing is bidding for people who would otherwise be able to make as much money uh, as you would be paying them in the private sector. And uh, first of all, some of that defies imagination because we're talking about essentially four to five hundred thousand dollars worth of cost per individual per year to the government, which would put that individual or that job category in the in the highest one percent of income earners in the country. Uh, so my question to you would be, and this is not in any way to impugn or to uh, d minimize the value of Navy SEALs, but outside of a military setting, where could a Navy SEAL for those talents, make four to five hundred thousand dollars if it weren't for a government contract. I don't know of any of our people that have made four to five hundred thousand dollars working as a contractor. They're not getting they're not getting paid that much. They no, get paid for every day they're in the hot zone. So it's very much like a uh, professional mariner's uh, existence. They go to sea. They get paid every day they're in the hot zone. The day they leave, their pay goes to zero. Um, average pay hypothetically around five hundred dollars a day we don't we don't pay the thousand dollars a day that's a huge um, mis uh, misperception as a flat-out error in the media so well, if you take uh, if you take fifteen thousand dollars a month and they work for six months it's ninety thousand dollars but that's not the cost of that job to the American taxpayer uh, yes sir but they're, but they're not showing up at the job naked on. they need uniforms equipment body armor, uh, boots, every, everything you wear from head to toe, right. um, their training, their travel, their insurance, sometimes their food. I mean, there's, there's very, very sophisticated price models that we bid competitively for, hundreds and hundreds of line items. Believe me, our folks right. burn a lot of um, electrons putting those price models together because you really got to know what you're doing on the front end. But again, it is a competitively bid product. Right. Well, I'm, um, I appreciate that. I want to pursue that a second. But I do have in front of me an invoice uh, from Blackwater to the Department of State in which one of the items is uh, invoice quantity, 3,450 units each at a cost of $1,221.62. That's your invoice. So I I'm not sure what that well, invoice is. Could I, I, ask, could I see that, sir? I'd be happy to submit that for the record. Um, we dealt uh, several months ago with a situation in which I don't believe you were a subcontract. Your company was a subcontractor for uh, the State Department or contractor. You were a subcontractor, and I'm relating. Uh, I'm talking about the incident in Fallujah, where four of your employees were ambushed and killed, and we had testimony from uh, two of their wives and two of their mothers several months ago. And in the course of that testimony, it was uh, we were told that they had actually contracted, each of them, at a rate of $600 a day. That's what they were to be paid. By the time it got to the American taxpayer, it was around $1,100 a day. You were the third subcontractor uh, under a contract given to KBR, as I recall, a Halliburton, then a Halliburton subsidiary. And we asked the question, of all of those subcontracts, did anybody add value up the ladder? for that additional $500 based on, uh, and we asked, did they provide any, any special equipment, any special s services, whatever, and the answer was no. So in that case, that's not your profit, but it appears to us, it appeared to us that by and large that additional $500 that the American taxpayer paid for that one person uh, was largely profit to three different corporations. Now, do, can you shed any light on that? situation. And I, I don't believe, again, that was, I think, a Defense Department contract, and KBR was just delivering supplies to troops, and you were, you were guarding the convoys. That could easily be. I'm not, um, I'm not completely familiar with the contract and subcontracting arrangement that you're speaking of, but uh, uh, I can tell you, with our work with the State Department, we are direct to the State Department, and there's no other um, uh, intermediaries adding cost or uh, or not adding value. Okay. One other question I want to ask. You you made the comparison again about that we have to bid for the, these people, but isn't there a, a significant distinction? I understand if we the military trains a pilot and then the pilot goes out and is uh, bid for by commercial aircraft and so forth, that's the private sector bidding. But in this situation, the American taxpayers are bidding against themselves because 
we trained Navy SEALs, Navy SEALs then go into your employee, then the Navy has to bid, as I understand in one report, $100,000 to get them back. Uh, but we're bidding against ourselves, aren't we? We're not bidding against an, an, a, another external competitor. The, the nature of the demand of this, uh, especially it grew for Blackwater, not, um, it grew even before 9-11. It grew after the, the coal was blown up, that Navy ship. So in a, um, now in a post-9-11 world, you have a lot of different demands for those kind of skill sets that are much higher demand than they were in the late 90s. So that is a changing nature of the market. Gentleman's time has expired. Mr. McHenry.